Well, maybe we will kick off here. We've got a few people have joined us. I'm sure some more will show up, but uh, we are recording the webinar here. So if you miss it, if you join late, or if you just wanted to watch it later, this recording will, will come on out to you. So today we are talking all about sales and growing MSPs and talking through the power of sales strategies, effective communications as, as levers to growing, to driving growth of an MSP. So today, let's get through some introductions here. We have myself, hi, I'm Colin Knox. I'm CEO and co-founder over at Gradient MSP. And joined today by Ken Patterson, VP of Communities and Ecosystems at Taylor Business Groups. How's it going, Ken? Oh, it's going fantastic. Always a great day when we get to share thoughts with Colin Knox. <laughs> Been a been a been only a few minutes. We've been doing a we've done a couple of these together, and it's always, always a yeah. good time. Always a, love uh, love uh, what we, what you guys do with the community, and the fact that Taylor is uh, so involved with the community as well. So, right up my alley. It's awesome. And today we're talking all about sales and growth. So, I'm, and it's it's an early enough webinar, so I'm celebrating with a with a good iced coffee here as we <laughs> as we work our way through. It's it's earlier for you than it is for me. It, so I, it is. I mean, it's it's lunchtime for you. So I'm surprised you don't have a bowl of pasta or yeah, <laughs> or something as we go through here. But don't don't make me even hungrier. Just let's let's roll through this. We don't want to talk about food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. It's so good. Um, awesome. So I will keep going on here and let's let's step into some of this stuff. I mean, we had a we've had a great prep call as we talk through some of the things that we want to talk about. And there's all these different ways for you to, to lever growth and sales and, and focus. And I think, you know, one of those, those first ways is, is through, through people. Right. And, and when we started talking about this webinar, I mean, everybody looks at, at right away, what's the sales process? What, what's, what's the tactic? How do you get it? How do you get there? And, you know, one thing that, that remains common in every single sales conversation you have or anything you're looking to grow with, with your business is people, right? You're interacting with people, you're engaging with people, you're selling to people. And ultimately, it's a, it's a person uh, or people that are, are making that decision to buy. And, you know, I think it's, it's funny that we'll often forget about that and get so stuck, maybe sometimes in this, this robotic almost process of how we move through things and there's a lack of personal touch or personalization in it. And, and Ken, you, you said an interesting thing about dropping things on, on, on its side when it comes to sales and taking this concept of just stopping selling. Why right. Talk right. to us a little bit about that. <clears throat> yeah. And you know, it's funny, I didn't come up with the concept and I'm surprised. Well, I'm not surprised that it didn't catch on because people are afraid of a big change like that. Right. Um, it was actually Tiffany Bova, if you remember, she did a lot of big speaking back when we were both MSPs. And when she got up on stage at an event and literally said that comment, hey, go back to your office and fire all your salespeople. It might have been a little aggressive to say that, but I knew That's what Tiffany. she meant by it. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's Tiffany. But the comment, the basic overall thing was we have to stop selling and we have to start understanding who we're speaking to and be a bit more consultative. And now, you know, after all these years of all of us, you know, basically trying to sell people because we felt like we needed the work and we didn't care what it was, we never actually got to understood and understand them. We were just throwing technical terms at them and beating them over the head with technology as opposed to understanding their problems and then saying we have a solution to that problem without even talking about the tech. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we talk about this all the time and, you know, Matt Lee does some great analogies with this type of conversation, but your doctors don't go around selling, right? They, they, they prescribe, they look at, they, they check you out, they scan you, they, and then they come back to you with fact-based solutions. Here's the things you need. And by the way, when that happens, I don't go, oh, you know, when he comes to me and says, Hey, you're fat and you're you know, you got high blood pressure and you got diabetes and I don't go, yeah, but I just want the white pill. But that's what we've done from the technical side is we spent so many years coming at them and just saying, well, hopefully they buy three or four of the things that I'm hitting them over the head with from a sales perspective. Um, instead of saying, yeah. hey, Colin, what's going on in your business? What keeps you up at night? 
how are things working? How do your people react to things when they go wrong? How does that affect your business? All about asking the right questions and then just saying, I have a solution for that and talking about the solutions that they're dealing, you know, so problems that they're dealing with and being prescriptive. Yeah. And I know Keith is going to keep hitting us. Well, with he's, <laughs> he's hitting us, right? He's hitting us and it's good, but, but it, it's, it's a valid point. The way, the way that you bring up the stuff about the doctors and stuff, right? right? It's, it's about listening. When, when you go to the doctor, you don't, you don't show up and say, Hey, what should I be doing? They're going to ask you about your symptoms, right? What are you, how are you feeling? What's wrong? Describe it. When did this happen? How does it, you know, what makes it worse? What makes it better? Right. What are you hoping for? And, and uh, what Keith said in the chat to us that maybe not everybody can see here is, you know, somebody asked him once to send, uh, you know, his presentation that helps him land his big clients. So he sent a picture of his ears and it's, it's true. <laughs> it's listening and understanding what they're experiencing, what right. their problems are, you know, what the symptoms are to work through and, and, and craft and diagnose a solution for that. Instead of solution selling and, and saying like, Hey, or, or just pushing a box that you want to sell something right. on it's, it's understanding what does fit and what what could be their their biggest problem because sometimes it's not necessarily a solution it's training right it's teaching teaching some of their staff or something um, or it's just well, changing maybe the process that they go through right and sales and salespeople shouldn't be afraid of this because it actually helps them I, I, I when we did this when I finally woke up and you know somebody much smarter than me kicked me in the pants and and said hey man you're doing this wrong and and I listened instead of whining about it um the the major change was the the our sales folks were happy not at first at first it was tough because they did they, it, was a, it was a different way of thinking and all of that but once they got it and understood that all they had to do from that point forward was make the customer happy, have conversations with them, understand what's going on in their life and their business and really get to know them, there wasn't any selling. And by the way, when you educate them on top of that, when you're just educating your customers, right, you yeah. spend time teaching them about what's going on and how things can change. That also puts you in a better position because they're going to come to you. Hey, Colin, remember when you told me about this MFA thing and I wasn't really paying attention to it, but I'm seeing it in the news and I'm seeing it here and I'm guessing we probably have to do something with that. Yeah. Boom. And they're going to feel more comfortable coming to you with that because they don't ever felt like you tried to sell them stuff over those the course of your relationship. It's, it's simply educating, right? Like that is that is such the big thing that that so many people in any industry, any type of business forget is they expect that they're going to launch some product, come out with a service, offer something, and people are just going to be like, oh, I need that. I'm going to go buy it. But it's right. educating them about why it's important, reminding them about challenges they have, finding ways to overcome things, even without your solution entirely, right. Is, right. Is, is the biggest part, right? You look at all of these people that, whether it's, it's coaching businesses or service and consulting or whatever, and they're doing all these influencer campaigns themselves turning into influencers on social media they're not out there spouting out about how awesome they are about how great their service is you know shoving a million case studies down your throat of of how their customers or clients or whatever made x y and z and and all of that no they're simply educating around the 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 area of their expertise that they also help solve and cater to Right? right. They're talking about, you know, fitness is an easy one. Everybody's talking about just how to, you know, how you should be focusing on nutrition and some little tidbits about nutrition and this and that and activity levels and everything. They're not giving you a full meal plan and telling you how many calories and what your macros and breakdown should be and how many, you know, these workouts. And no, they're educating you and, and informing you on how to go. And they're kind of ushering you along until the point that you say, no, I want to make a change or I want to get, you know, this or that or whatever else. And then guess what? You're going and engaging with that person, probably you're following or, or checking out their service and, and, and giving it a try. But that education is the biggest thing, whether it's right. to your existing customers or, or people that you just hope to be your customers, right? It's, it's to constantly anybody educating that will listen. out there, right? Yep. And to anybody that will listen. Any, anywhere and everything, right? And it's, it's establishing that 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 expertise and and that you're a thought leader and, and an authority on your topic 
Um, you know, it's, it's funny you mentioned on our call local media stuff. I mean, this is a big thing we did with our MSP back in the day, um, which was completely free. We didn't have to pay any ads. We didn't have to drop anything or, or do anything that way. But you simply worked your way in with some of the local reporters at the various news media outlets and stuff and, and everything. Anything, anytime something technology came up, guess who that person was calling? Hey, right. I heard about this little scheme. Hey, I heard about this. Hey, I heard, do you want to hop on camera for five minutes or not even and, and right. spout a couple of things about how this works and give some advice? And so many MSPs and, and business owners that I've talked to have said, I don't, I don't want a bunch of people phoning me about their home computers or this or that or whatever. Probably 90 plus percent of the people watching that news work at a company. Right and now you've just been exposed to a bunch of different people and possibly decision makers at that company or, or whatever else. Right. Um, so <laughs> big way to reach people and establish that, that presence. Well, Colin, I, 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 listen, I was the last guy to, to sell to homeowners or, you know, end users um, as an MSP, but guess what? CEOs at big corporations, they have homes and they watch news and they watch this stuff. So you might think that that's somebody calling up saying they want it at home, but when they find out their business isn't protected, that's where you're going to get them. And that's where you're going to say, hey, we're just trying to make sure every business is protected. Um, and we did it, you know, Colin, we had a perfect storm of everything. So we did, you know, we tried to get in the media as much as possible. We tried to do, we gave free webinars out to anybody who would come and just basically yeah. talk about the threat. What's out there? Yeah. What's going on? And then, by the way, at the end, it would be a simple, oh, and by the way, you know, we do help with these things. If you don't, if you're not getting the help that you need, you can definitely ring us. And because they were seeing us doing all these things, they eventually came back and said, oh, wow, my yeah. IT person isn't even doing this stuff. And if you really want to, like, get a little hook in there, create a checklist of things that every MSP or IT company should be yeah. doing for them. And if you put that checklist up and say, if these things aren't being done, you may want to have a conversation with somebody, whether it's us or yeah. somebody, but you should have a conversation with someone. That's a good way to say, to, to weed out maybe the, the, you know, the bad actors out there who, you know, hung a shingle and just say, I fix stuff, but they're not really rising the tides with most MSPs and helping these people. So that's yeah. a way to do it too. Just have that checklist at the end, put some really good solid points on there. And they're going to think, they're going to look up and say, yep. whoa, whoa, I don't, my guy doesn't do four of those things. I should have yeah. a chat with this person. And then obviously you deliver on your end. You don't push any sale. You just talk about the way that you can help them. Because that's yeah. at the end of the day, you're putting that out there. We're here to help. If you have somebody, that's great. But we want to make sure they're doing the right things too. Yeah, I think, you know, it, it all comes back to people here. And, yes. and there's other ways to leverage, but... If you help people, they will want to help you, right? And, and it's, again, getting out of this premise that it's a business and it's always business and business and business. It's not a business that refers you on to somebody else. It's right. not a business that recommends or gives you a, a testimonial or a quote or an introduction. It's somebody, it's a person or people at that business. And if you've helped them obtain and achieve their objective, whether it's the business owner and the business is more secure and productive and profitable and things are going and they have happier people awesome if it's somebody that's just you made them look really good in there or you helped them do their job and they were successful and uh, you know hitting their own objectives as a as an employee at that business whatever else that's all you need to do they will know and understand that your objective is to grow your business and be successful as a business and the number one and easiest way they can help with that is through advocacy and and right. introductions and referrals and and going about that right right it's you know when when you think about all the different levers and and mechanisms that you can use to go to market and reach market these days and I know this is about sales but growth as well you know and you can't do sales without opportunities coming to you I mean ads ads is a gong show these days right of right. of who can outspend who can craft around the you know, the search ad rules and regulations around listing and advertising and IT services business versus, mm -hmm. you know, SEO and on SEO stuff, you're not competing locally, you're competing globally against everybody right. fighting for those keywords, right? Like, it, there's so many 
things that you're trying to do and radio spots or TV spots or billboards I've seen people doing and stuff like, holy smokes, it comes down to the people. If you can get people motivated and, and happy and, and wanting to help you, there's, there's no faster growth trajectory you have. You even look at and talk to some of the greatest salespeople in any industry, in any business, anywhere, the ones that succeed are the ones who build their network and help people who then help them, who right. find opportunities, who refer them, who give them the case studies and testimonials, who buy more, who continue doing work with those people because it's that person-to-person relationship um, that drives it so so much stronger and, and more you know, consistently. Plus, your expenditure is a lot less when it goes to your cost to acquire a customer or cost to generate a lead. Right. And it, that, that all ties into, you know, if you're making, if you're helping to educate people, just in general, if you're educating people, they're going to remember that you made them smarter, you help them learn how to do some of the things that you're trying to push them to do when you're being a pushy salesperson. Yeah, right. And you're delivering that all through a mechanism that's really is the common goal is to help people and your business will succeed by that. It's yeah. how I mean, we talk about sales and community, and I always say, you know, sales and community are two different things, but with a really good community, your sales are going to, it's going to drive sales in a much more natural way. And that's yeah. where people are just going to want to do business with you and your company if you're trying to help them through community. And it yeah. sounds corny in some cases, but I've, I witnessed it happen over the last four years with my previous employer. And I'm seeing it here with some of the vendors that are stepping up and realizing we got to build this community so that we can yeah. drive the, the people. And by the way, community isn't customers. Having customers does not mean community. Community is belonging to something that makes you feel like it matters to belong to that, right? Yeah. And that's what that feeling is. I feel like I belong. I feel like I matter. They're asking me the right, they're asking me questions. And by the way, when they ask me something, they act on it, right? Well, and, so, and you don't have to own that community either right, right? like right, there's there's yeah. so many things if you look at you know i've i've talked to some some very successful msps who have focused on you know one yeah their their local community or city or municipality or whatever and you've got the community of driving change in the municipality whether it's with your chamber of commerce whether it's with you know boards that you sit on you right. know charitable groups that you participate in things like that I mean, there's there's one MSP in particular that um, they got super involved in their church, right? And and it is it is crazy to watch how they grew simply through that community with their right. church was was unreal, and I couldn't believe like that was their number one lead source and growth source. Um, so you don't have to own the community that that you're super right. participant, you know, participate in, but you know being active in in whatever community and things that you're passionate about that drives passion and connection with people and and everything else that's what matters well that's um, how that's how that's why we start to talk about ecosystem right because it's not about just the communities and and i honestly believe that at some point this whole idea of channel channel is so small it makes it feel yeah. small right <clears throat> and you just said it perfectly it's about the communities in the ecosystem that you're in right and those communities involve your personal communities the ones that are closest to you your church community yeah. your chamber community whatever it may be whatever you tie into it works and um i have a another msp down in florida colin that they're so tied into their chamber and all their local uh, event type things where they help the community out that we made a stop down there on the bus tour and they had a speaker come out from their from their community people and it was this woman uh that was speaking about helping um homeless shelters families that are in homeless shelters and it was really yeah. it was really touching and moving and most people are like well what's this have to do with with us and it's like what are you talking about we're not just talking about the communities within the it environment we're talking about the communities that they serve and we have to make sure that we yeah. expand that out and man i'll tell you the power of that was was really really taken to heart and we noticed that the 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 they had a real tight tie into the customers in their area or their partners in that area yeah. because they saw what these what they were doing just because Absolutely. they wanted to help right and 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 again this goes back to people 
generally it's not all businesses that it, that make up a community it's the people at those businesses or or from those businesses that that move it along right so right. you know i think i think that's one thing and we'll we'll kind of continue on into the next <laughs> section here as we we could we could just, people, we can we just can, shut the shut the slide off cuz we're going to go can, all over the place we 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 <laughs> could and we can but you know the next is exposure right how do you reach these people and and we'll we'll get into sales stuff and and I know we actually have another um, joint webinar with you guys in the next couple months here a few months on talking about sales process but we'll we'll get into that one a little bit later here but you know it's about exposure mm-hmm. and and how do you reach as wide and mass a market as possible and there's tons of MSPs that are very small and and don't have big budgets for for reaching market, but it doesn't need to cost a lot, right? We started talking about some of these things where, you know, you have community, there's there's initiatives that you can and should be taking on and maybe already are taking on anyways that are low cost when it comes to, you know, educating your clients and doing things. And, you know, we did we did some lunch and learn things for our clients to to give back and give them some free lunch and keep educating them. Uh, and then we moved that into some webinars before, but, or, or afterwards, but, you know, the one thing we always said was, Hey, bring, bring a, a colleague of yours from another business, mm-hmm. you know, somebody else in a similar role. Cause when you talk community too, you think about things, um, you know, a lot of the uh, financial associations like the CPAs and CAs and, and legal and whatever else, they all have their own little groups and and hubs of, of people, right? Like, Oh man, we had, engineering associations where we would invite some of the engineering contacts that we had at clients mm-hmm. to talk about certain things around CAD and, and everything else with their computers and specifications and stuff. And they would nerd out on stuff with us. We'll bring some of your engineering buddies and friends from, from other companies, right? And then if we did something on, you know, cost of ownership of IT or, or technology and evergreening processes, hey, bring some other uh, accounting colleagues of yours. And yep. we would kind of go through that and, and be able to educate people and expose into these other broader groups, right? Uh, it was, yeah, we, was uh, just interesting. We did, we did similar things. And we did, um, we, what we would do is partner up with some of those lawyers and accountants and have a subject that was important to all of it. And then we would invite from our customer base and have them invite from their customer base. And there was a lot of crossover. Yeah. And listen, you put, you put, 25, 30, 40 people that don't know you in a room with your customers who love you, good things are going to happen while you're just talking about how we're protecting their businesses and why, you know, you have the legal person there to discuss the legal ramifications of a breach. And then you're talking about how to stop the breaches. I'm not even talking about my business. I'm talking about how to protect themselves and why the lawyer is talking about how to protect them. And all of a sudden, everybody in the room is chatting with each other that's going to get you more exposure. They're going to talk about what happened at that event. The fact that you didn't stand up on a stage and sell, sell, sell. You actually had a conversation with them about solutions and didn't even say, come over here. We're going to tell you, you know, this, you got to come to us. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I think, you know, even when, when you look at exposure, some of it's just awareness, right? So you've got things like you can do with local media and it's surprisingly easy to strike up a relationship with local reporters and stuff. And, you know, takes an email with a little bit of a news story because they're all looking for news stories. So, hey, you heard, did you hear about this little hack or, you know, security threat or whatever? And, hey, here's a couple little things, defeating them some information and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, but the rest is your brand exposure. I mean, we um, we supported a couple charities back back in the day with our MSP. And then what we started to see was, you know, a consistency through them all they would host some kind of like family day or fun day or something at least once a year outside of the regular stuff. You know how easy it is to like drop a couple hundred bucks to sponsor a bouncy castle or something at a family fun day. And then you put your little picket uh, logo sign and maybe website there or or a quick thing. It doesn't take a lot to find out all these types of fun day events that happen through the summer or pumpkin hunts or whatever else. And you're talking a couple hundred bucks here or there and your logo's out there and these families are going out and they're seeing your stuff and they see your logo all the time at all these different things that they're doing around their local communities and stuff. And again, those people then start to recognize or be like, oh, I've seen this all the time. Who is this? What do they do? What do they offer? 
um, and, and they feel more attached to your organization because you're doing things and contributing to things that give them a, a happier life or yeah. richer experiences and right. stuff like that, right? 100%. And you talk about cost, right? Hey, the, one of the biggest, you can't see my phone because I have, oh, there you go. I'll put it in front of my face. You know what this is right here? This is a full video production crew, right? Yeah. Call me a hand. One of the easiest things to do now, and you see some people doing it, but I don't think there's enough people doing it because I think it's very helpful. Pop yourself on a video talking about something that happened in your day from an IT perspective. That's it. Three minutes, five minutes, maybe max, and just say, you know, today I had a customer call and this was the issue. And I see this happening quite a bit. So I figured I'd share this with all of you. Quick little blurbs of helping people. Oh, man, uh, You're not even talking about your company. You're not. All you're saying is, this is what happened. This is how I fix it. I wish people would do X to maybe protect themselves. And you do that twice a week for three to five minutes. Want to talk about exposure because you're putting it on social and your friends and friends of friends and everybody is seeing this. Everybody's well, paying attention to it. Oh man, the amount, there's a lot of people that say, I don't have time to be on LinkedIn. That's, you know, it's a social thing. I'm not, I don't want to read a bunch of people's stuff, anything else. And they don't have big networks on, on there, but holy smokes, the power of, of having that, right? Like it, it takes a little bit of effort, but if you literally went through each of your clients' company pages and you followed their company page, and then they have all of their employees listed on there because everybody that works says that, hey, I work at this company. And now you can right. see that. And you go through and start requesting to connect to them all. And you, you start growing your network that way. And you start reaching out and seeing some of that stuff and Colin, requesting on, them to on, all. Let me stop you just real quick on that because you know the big yeah. negative part of that. Do that, but do not sell them. Do not send no, no, them no. Them. Don't sell them yeah. anything. Right after, right after they accept your request, do not send them anything. These, these are these are your existing customers. I'm yes. saying, right? You don't have to sell them anything. They already right. should know you or know of you or see your company right. or whatever. Exactly. But to do that stuff and and to what you're saying there, yeah, a couple times a week, share a quick video story about a piece of news, something that's come up a lot, something that could help them solve something right. or or whatever. And you see, you know, I'm connected to geez, thousands of MSPs now. So I'm seeing more and more of these pop up all the time. The second that one of them likes your, your, your post comments on it, does whatever that immediately gets spread out to all of their contacts and network. Right. And that's everybody else that's connected to them locally and even not locally. And it just continues to spread and grow and, and keep going on. Right. So that that's, such a cheap and easy way to do exposure right. plus that ties back to what we were talking about earlier but just educating helping people right oh i heard this happen probably happens to a lot of people here's how you can solve that and not do that the amount of people that will just like that and be like okay that's good that's that's great right. great stuff um and you then, can continue uh, to just do other, that the other side of exposure is something that you did quite a bit i know i've heard your stories you have some great stories wrapped around just asking. If you don't ask, you don't get. If you have a if you have a, a good partner base of partners that love what you do, rave about what you do, why not ask them to rave to somebody right. or you know just a little question about hey, do you love our services? Do you love what we do? Yes, yes. Would you refer us? Yes. Yeah. It's that simple. And sure, some people might come back with, well, I don't like to put, well, that's fine. Here, and by the way, you can show them how to do it without selling the same way that you've been doing it with them. Yeah. Educate your friends. Um, so being able to ask the people who already love you to go out and tell other people, because yeah. basically you're helping them help their friends because you're going to be able to help them with all the things you've helped, you know, um, help, help, help keeps coming up. But all the things that you've done for them, you can now do for their friends. And now their friends are going to feel good. Oh, wow. These, these yeah. guys referred me to this company. They came in, they fixed a whole bunch of problems that we had. It's all positive ways of yeah. help. Well, and it's, it's kind of interesting, right? You'll, you'll talk to people and they'll say, well, I'm scared to ask because they might, they might say no, or they might spread something bad if they had a bad experience or they'll talk about this or that or whatever. Right. And, and I think, yes, if, if you've not found a way to turn a bad experience into a good experience, uh, if you've not solved issues or you've not been communicative or, or whatever, that, that could be a risk. And maybe you need to work on the experience side of your business first. But 
you know, there's, there's no perfect company out there. Everybody's yeah. going to have follies. Everybody's going to make mistakes. Something's going to go wrong for everybody. But you know what, if you're, if you're not asking, then you're not going to get yeses. You might get no's if you ask, but you're also not going to get yeses if you don't. Um, and there's a lot of little tricks you can do, right? Like there's, there's ways that you can get a, get a rating, find out hey, if you, if you do customer satisfaction surveys off of your tickets and you get a really good satisfaction survey, hit those people up. You don't need to automate it. Right. You get the survey back. You see that send them an email, give them a call. More hey. importantly, more importantly, call the ones that didn't give you a good review because yeah. that's where your communication well, that's, comes That's in. your feedback. Yeah. But if you're, right. if you're looking for the quick growth, hey, can we get a quote from you? Can we use a quote from you? Hey, do you know anybody else that's, you know, just start talking to them about, about referral opportunities and the ones that maybe don't even like you. If you incentivize a referral properly, they will, they will give you that exposure because most people, going back to the people, are still selfish. Um, <laughs> right. Because they care about them. And that's right. that's one sure. of the number one things to to leverage anytime. Right. All that anybody typically ever cares about is is them and how they can get what they want. Right. One, if I believe that you are the best solution to help me achieve my objective, which is what I really want. I'm going to hire you. I'm going to buy from you. I'm going to do that with you, right? And and if you've communicated to me that you are the best to, to help me and that you can help me and everything else, that's a shoe in. If if that's not the case or whatever, and you're looking for other stuff, I want to win that iPad. I want to get the five hundred dollar thing, Amazon card. I want whatever else. Selfishly, yep. I'm a, I'm gonna do what it takes for me to get that. Yeah, right. And there's Some two people different are roles very there. motivated that way. There's two different ro roles there for motivation, Colin. And you hit on the most one of the more important ones because there is a way to motivate the business owner by saying, Hey, you let someone know about this, I'll give you a month free. By the way, people go, Oh my God, a month free. You would have never had that client if you didn't do that. And it's like paying a salesperson, except for yeah. it's a one-time hit, right? Then there's the people who are in control, the person in the chair, the controller, the front, you know, whoever it is, those are the ones that don't care about the extra month. That's not helping them in any way, shape or form. And it is all about them. Like Colin yeah. said, what, if you know them better and you know what they love, like I guarantee you right now, there's some people out there that would love an LSU championship shirt because <laughs> they won the world series, basically college world series. Right. So if you know these people really well, Find what motivates them and just say, hey, man, look, uh, this is something that I, I'd like to do. If you can if you can help me out, connect me up with people, th this is, you know, I'm going to reward you with X. And if it's something they really love, that'll motivate them. But it it, it, it motivates them big time, right? Yep. A lot of people, you talk to a lot of people that say, well, referral, referral programs haven't worked for me, haven't worked for me. Well, that's that's because you're either giving the business yeah. one month free for every contract you sign or something, which is a common one I see out there. Well, mm -hmm. that benefits the business owner or business owners. It doesn't benefit right. anybody else at the business you're dealing with. Right. Yep. Um, or you say like, Hey, I'll give, you know, X, X dollars to a charity that you choose and stuff. And there, the charitable aspect does get to some people, but again, yep. most people are selfish and they're like, well, I'd rather have that money. Or, or whatever, right? And then you maybe change it up and, and do whatever because now you're not going to get a charitable receipt and help on your taxes and everything else. So you're offering less money and that's not motivating enough. It's it's getting to something that will actually motivate them and drive that that push for them to want to win, want to get, want to have um, yeah, I, I, uh, in there, right? I did, the, uh, I did the team thing, Colin, to your, to your point about the... Uh... Uh, I did the, it didn't do it as like, oh, I'm going to do that, do the, uh, you know, the jumpy machine, the jumpy uh, thing and, and put the sign in front of it. What I did was I went to their sales team and said, hey, look, we're trying to, we're trying to gain business just like you guys are. And we want to find a way to motivate you. We don't want to make it to be, and obviously you get the owners okay on it. And yep. then basically I found out that they all liked breweries. They liked the microbreweries. So I basically nice. paid for, I said, if you guys do this, I'll pay for a microbrewery tour and then a night a night of dinner and hanging out at the thing. And I, when I tell you, I got more referrals that that week than probably out of almost anything we did. It was just simple. That's what they liked. I would have did it anyways, but I I tied this referral thing to them, 
and they won we won we got you know we got some great referrals out of it and it, and then they asked when are we doing this again <laughs> yeah no it's you know what it's it's interesting you said the brewery when we actually one of our clients was a was a brewery microbrewery oh, they're a fairly large one um but they had a, a nice tap room and everything too and, and we simply asked to host a uh you know a little event there at their thing well yeah so awesome so we got the venue for free super cool venue everything else we were supporting their business now by bringing people and and our existing customers and our our network out there they ended up starting to promote it as well to help us then right right because it's something that was happening there it was spurring their own business and and doing stuff so I mean, doing things in joint with your with your clients and your customers again Absolutely. is is this way to reach exposure, right? They don't have to refer you or recommend you, but if you've got one legal client and you want to do something on on legal and technology, awesome. I'm going to bring all of my customers there. Maybe they'll bring all of their customers there. Now we get extra reach, right? Whether it's accounting firms, legal firms, services firms, recruiting firms, we did one with um you know on and on and on around educating and stuff that's a quick way to get your customer to introduce you to all of their customers right they're not necessarily recommending or endorsing you but it's kind of an implied um um introduction or recommendation because they're doing things with you they're doing they're they're presenting you in front of all of uh right um their customers so well, it's funny, Colin, too. We we kind of danced around some of the organizations, but also law law, there's legal organizations, there's construction organizations. They will allow you to come in for a very small price. It's I think the most I ever paid was eight hundred dollars to get a booth at uh I will say don't ever do chiropractors. It's the it's a, it's the roughest one of all. Yeah. But I mean, uh we did a construction organization. I got into the actual order of legal something or other and all you do is hang out and you don't as long as you don't try to sell and you just talk to them and they ask questions naturally about technology and you become yeah. this trusted person that's a part of those organizations just by popping into their quarterly meetings and then yeah. getting into some other they have other communications that you can get on stuff yeah. like that where you're just kind of slowly building a relationship with them could be yeah could gain big dividends because there's not a lot of people doing it. They're not oh, putting the time into it. Oh, huge. Um, I'll give one before we go on to the next thing. <laughs> I'll give one more <laughs> creative thing that I just remembered that we did. And it's not like I strategically did these things. They just kind of happened. So right. um, one was that we had a, one of our anchor clients was an executive recruitment firm. And at one point they reached out to us and said, Hey, one of our, one of our clients has a has a credit with us and they want to hire an executive in IT and we've never done IT placements before. Is this something that you could help us with through the resume vetting process, the interviewing process and everything else? And you know what I, I, I said to the client, you know, we'll we'll take a look at it and stuff. And then they even said, we'll pay for your time hourly to do this with us because they got paid big bucks for, for high-end placements, right? We got on this thing with them and we ended up doing some other engagements where we helped place IT managers, but then we also met as a way of that process, a whole bunch of candidates that were super qualified, high-end, you know, IT executives. Well, guess who we connected with on LinkedIn after, kept in touch with, got some other side IT projects with, staff augmentation deals and gigs with, uh, a whole bunch of things for co-managed IT and stuff and these other businesses that we otherwise wouldn't have had reach into by doing something like that. And it was just simply, again, that exposure, that interaction of being out there, right. not just so hyper-focused on just doing what you do and, and limiting you know, the, the scope of, of where you can reach. Um, all right. Moving into the last part that, you know, we kind of talked about is growth through process and, process. and making it, right? Process. 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 <laughs> process. I'm not saying process. That's too Canadian, Ken. Ah. That's too Canadian. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you, you, you look at all this stuff and, and some things happen 
accidentally and you stumble on them and and you know it's it's trial and error and testing and sampling and stuff like that but you do still need process to things you need to to be mindful and purposeful about attempting things and trying things to create a process and you have to be consistent in it um, um, because without yeah. that consistency you're not going to see results right so how are you going to how are you going to grow and bring new people in they're going to, so they're going to now come in and stumble and fumble. If you build a process, people can step right in and get started a heck of a lot faster with a process in place. Yeah. That's a, that's just a big, a big thing you learn owning a company, right? When you bring people in and there's no process for them and there's nothing for them to step in. You just say, here's your stuff. This is what we got to do. Go sell. Yeah. Well, it doesn't work. I'll, I'll all of it though. And it's not even, not even just having to, to hand off to other people. You know, I've, I've been at an event, God, how many events do we do, but you'll be talking with an MSP, having a drink or just socializing and networking. And they'll be like, Oh, I just got great news. We just closed this new client. It's super awesome. Super excited. And, you know, you know, if we can do this all the time, that we'll be this big in the next year. So then you ask them, okay, well, how are you going to repeat what you did that time to, to get that? Right. <laughs> oh, 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 I don't know. Well, oh, where did that one come from? Oh, I don't know. It's digging in and, and you know, you have that. Now, how do I repeat that? How do I make that consistent? I can't project or predict where my business is going to be or have any chance of hitting that without being able to follow a process consistently and continually to make that happen. Right. And, and with any process, you have steps. And it's always understanding the steps and, and, and you don't need the most perfect process to start with, but you need a process. And right. then you can start to tune in and which step is, is the most successful, which ones am I having the, the biggest struggle with, or where am I losing people or other steps that a lot of our, our new customers are just jumping over, right? Yeah. How is that well, happening and why is that happening? Yeah. Well, again, it's a constant you should constantly be reviewing these things, right? What works, what doesn't work, following the process and then fixing the process and putting metrics in place and understanding yeah. how it works, how it doesn't work. And, you know, Keith, Keith brought up a really interesting point of their challenge is balancing the process versus the creative thinking and allowing for that improvement because then it's a, is there too much structure, right? We've seen yeah. that where things are too rigid and there's no actual new thoughts coming into play. So there is that balance. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, I think when you're coming with a process, a lot of people just think, hey, A, a to Z, where, what do we have to do to get there, right? And they have to methodically step through and, and be very granular in it. But I think, you know, you can do things that are a three-step process. You can have a two-step process. You can have right. five, 10. Geez, I talked to somebody a long time ago. I had a 19-step foolproof <laughs> fail, fail, you know, you know, high success rate sales process. You're going to win every time. Um, and and I think that's silly. But you know, I think when it comes to process, regardless of how many steps you have, regardless of what those steps are, it's understanding at every step along the way what you are selling. Okay. Mm -hmm. What you are selling, most of the, the path along your sales process is not your product or service, believe it or not, because nobody in step one, two, three, let's say you got your seven step process, the first five to six steps of that, you are not selling your product, you are not selling your service, right? That's, that's where people stop and, and, right. and maybe get lost as I'm trying to sell in step one and two and three and four, what my product and service is. What you are selling at every step is the next step. It's for them to take the next step, right? And that's the big holdup. They always think, oh, all I have to do is sell my service. Okay, well, how are you going to sell your service? Well, I need to do a, an assessment. Okay, so actually what you're selling to start is you're selling an assessment. Right. Let me come in and do a free assessment or whatever, right? Oh, no, no then, free. Then I, I'm just saying as a thing, right? <laughs> Sell, that's what you're selling first, right? right? Then, then what's next? Okay, well, then, then I'll do a proposal. No, you won't. The next step is to sell a chance to explain the findings of your assessment, right? right? I'm, I'm selling a meeting to discuss. I'm selling the findings. 
then in that findings, you're, you're not selling your solution right away. You're not pushing a solution, right? You're selling an opportunity to build a proposal that you want to understand and everything else. And then you do that, right? So you're selling the next step along the way. Then you're selling the proposal. At the end, yeah, you're selling the service, but they don't feel like they've been pitched to and pushed and prodded and stuff the whole way along. Right. They've agreed to a, a sequence of meetings and engagements and, and getting you to do things and seeing the quality of your work and everything else and your, your business experience the whole way through. So that by the end, you've had all these micro wins along the way that they're more agreeable to you that now I'm selling you the product. And based on everything we've gone through along the whole way, I've understood your problems. I've understood your symptoms. I, I've crafted a solution. I've earned your trust. You've seen the quality of my work, the dependency and reliability of, of the business. Now we're, now we're ready to we gotta, sell. We got to find a better word than sell though. That was a lot of selling. Um, but I, I, I get, I agree with the way your, your methodology and, you know, um, what was it? Uh, Sandler Sales used to call them upfront contracts, right? And basically, every step of the way, you should be upfront with where you're getting to, what that next yeah. step is. And I did it on everything, including my initial contact. Hey, Colin, yeah. how are you? This is how yeah. the meeting is going to go. I'm going to learn a lot about you. You're going to learn a little about me. And we're yeah. going to have a conversation around if there's a fit. If there's a fit, this is what our next step is. If there isn't yeah. a fit, I'm going to help you find someone who is. Yeah. Oh, yes. And well, then, I'm, and then when you get to that step and they agree, now that you've already you set the next part of that up with another upfront time. contract. And Every meeting you go point, into right. needs an agenda. You just said exactly. it right there. Okay. So if I'm going into a sales meeting, a discovery meeting, a, an intro meeting, what you need an agenda. Here's what we're actually right. going to cover, right? It doesn't have to be on a slide, anything else. Here's how we like to drive these, these meetings, this, 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 this. And at the end of, like you said, what, what, what is the outcome of that? Right. Right. I, you know, as a, as the next step would be X. Does that sound good to you? Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Go through the meeting and then wrap it up. Just like if you're, if you're having a meeting in your business, you should give everybody an agenda on what the outcome and purpose of that meeting is. And at the end of the meeting, there's going to be action items and right. you're going to agree on what the next steps are, right. And who's doing what and everything else. When you get to that part of the meeting, do that and book the next meeting. We're going to go away. We're going to do this, everything else. The next step is for us to, to have a meeting, to circle back and discuss our findings, do whatever. Yep. I would believe that everybody watching this has experienced the old, okay, send me a proposal. And you thought that meeting went great. Everything was wonderful. They agreed with everything you said. You hugged even on the way out. And then you never got the never got a call back, never got an email back. They just completely blew you off. Yeah. Because well, and how many times do no you real plan? You, you talk to a salesperson or somebody in those things, and it's well, here's your pipeline. Well, what's the next step? Oh, the ball's in their court. Ball is never in their court. Ever. Right? It's always, it's always for you. You, you can make your job so much easier. And people say, well, I don't have time to do all the follow-ups and everything else. I actually don't have to. If you sell the next step. At the end of that, at the end of every engagement or meeting yeah. or, or whatever, that's already done. You have something on the calendar. You have the action items, everything else. Keith has a good one, right? Next yep. step, love you to, to show me your operation and workflows. Awesome. Let's, let's schedule that. When can we come by? Right. A quick tip, Colin, just because I made the, the comment on the whole free assessment piece. And I know you, that's not your jam, but I, I throw it out there because people do this. Don't devalue what you do by giving something away for free. If you're talking to someone about an assessment, the way I used to do it was simple. Colin, we're going to do an assessment. And at the end of the assessment, you can use this assessment with anybody. It's going to be a very detail-oriented assessment. It's going to tell you where things need to be fixed. If you want to go use that with an IT company, that's great. It's going to cost you $3,000. Yeah. If you decide to use it with us, then I'll waive the fee, the fee for the assessment. Then yeah. it's different. You're giving value to it. You're not saying it's free. And that kind of completely changes things. Plus, if you do the assessment for free and they go somewhere else, you're at least getting the three grand yeah. for the assessment that you did. Oh, that absolutely. Take a lot of work. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think the big thing to to any process and and something at, at the end, and everybody thinks it always has to wait to the end too, is to go for the close, to ask for the deal. Right. 
You have a lot of people that they'll drop the proposal and then they'll be like, oh, I'll wait to hear back. And then they'll follow up and say, hey, did you have any questions? Hey, is there any other thoughts you had? Is there anything else I can provide you? Instead of saying, hey, are you ready to move forward? Hey, can we, can we you know, sign you up? Can we get started? How do we By get started? By the way, right? if that's in your upfront contract and you've already said that that's what you're going to ask, they, they're yeah. already prepared for it. Absolutely. And, and, and that's where you go to, again, ask for the close of, uh, at the end of every step. Right. Don't don't ask for the close of the contract sign and the whole whole deal or whatever. But hey, we said that if if this you know went through and we hit this and and solved this or X Y and Z, that we would move forward to that. Have I done that for you in this meeting? Okay. So do you feel comfortable moving forward to the next step? Yes. Awesome. Right. If they Holly, say no, that's that's so important. What you just did. Don't set an expectation and then not make sure that those expectations were met. Yeah. That was a, that's an excellent, that's, if you say something's going to be 10 minutes and you're going over, you stop at 10 minutes and say, I'm sorry, I told you this would be 10 yeah. minutes. Can we keep moving forward with this? That's a, that's a real key piece of this, Colin. You're setting expectations. They should be in place for both. But then you're having wins along right. the way to you, right? You're establishing credibility. You're establishing trust. You're, there's, there's, um, you know, whoever it was but there's if you get so many what they called was was micro agreements along the way your chances of closing the big deal like what you're actually selling to them by the end of that is like 90 plus percent right Can you imagine having a 90 plus percent close rate and all you have to do is is have them in their mind saying yes to you more right have i answered all the questions you had yes is there anything you feel uncomfortable with, you know, or is there anything you're still uncomfortable with? No, right? Like, just, are you, are you ready to move forward? Yes. Does this sound agreeable to you? Yes. Does this make sense? Yes. And the more that they say yes along the way, the better. So you just have to give yourself a little chance, right? Right. And Colin, a good piece of advice during that process too, is to Stop. If you feel like you're going for you're going on and they're not getting it, stop and say directly to them, hey, Colin, I'm getting the feeling that you're not fully understanding this piece of this. And I want to make sure that you get this. Does this make sense? Are we moving in the right direction? Because if they say yeah. yes there, they're more likely to say a yes at the end of it because they're not going to argue with their own data. If you no, get them to say absolutely. yes to certain pieces of it and say, OK, so you believe this is the right thing? Oh, yes. OK, good. We're going to move forward from here. Just yep. being able to ask those questions and don't be afraid if they say no, because you're, you should be able to fill them in and fix whatever it is that they're going to ask better than at the end when they just basically say, send me the proposal. Well, yeah. And that, again, that goes all the way down to when you, when you're in one of your final things, you revert back to what the symptoms were they were looking to solve and what they were looking to, to achieve from your first meeting, right? So I'm, we're about to sit down here to review a proposal. And my, my hope is that this proposal is, is acceptable and, and solves what you're looking for and that we, we leave this meeting with an agreement to move forward in, in business together, right? And they'll say, okay, because that's a, that's a safe out, right? Oh, okay, right. if you do, right? But then you follow up with a, so if I show you a solution and a proposal that helps you achieve X, Y, and Z, which you told me were your, your top three objectives, what you were looking to solve. Is there any reason you would not move forward? No. Awesome. I'm going to hold you to that later, right? Don't say that part. Go through the proposal. Make sure that that proposal does talk to, to solving those things. So at the end of the thing, it's, are we ready? are we ready to do business here? And if they say no, then okay, do you not feel that this proposal, what I've shown you, helps you achieve X, Y, and Z? And if they have any concerns about any of them, address those and, and make sure they're. But if they come back and say, no, it solves all of those. Okay, well, earlier you said, if I showed you this, that it solves those, that you would be willing to move forward. What's, what's holding you up? Oh, I want to talk to someone. I need this. I need that. Okay, so perfect. So how do I help you get that approval? How do I help you do that and everything else? so that we can then close that deal, right? Yep, love it. Awesome. So you, you just said, if you told somebody that something's gonna take so long, 10 minutes, you wrap up at 10 minutes. Well, we told people that this webinar was gonna be an hour <laughs> and we have six minutes left in that. 
So we're going to be very cognizant of that. If anybody has any other questions, thoughts, uh, feedback, anything else that they want to drop into the Q&A uh, of the webinar here, into the webinar chat, we can when grab and talk to. I mean, we've got now it's five minutes left, so I'll stop uh, rambling here. But please do shoot those in if you have any questions. And uh, um, as we wait for anything there to come in, we'll kind of to move over. Oh, there it is, wrapping up with questions. Um, while we wait, and if anything happens, Ken, I'll thank you again for, for your time and hopping on. It's always, always awesome to chat with you and share some of our histories and stories and experience and, and everything else. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's great catching up with you as well, my friend. Uh, I, I, it's, uh, it's fun to watch uh, people who have uh, rolled through and, and, you know, I'll say it, you paved the way for a few of us, you know, coming from the MSP space and moving over to the vendor space. And uh, you're now on a, a, a multiple success journeys in the vendor space, actually, you know, jumping in and running a vendor. So uh, very, very uh, cool to watch you take the, your knowledge from the MSP side and bring it into the vendor space, which is why you created Pass Portal in the first place. So I think from that standpoint, it's always fun to watch. But uh, and this might be the first time we spent almost an hour talking, and not, hockey didn't come up once. But. Hockey didn't come up once, but now it has. <laughs> no, I ruined I it. I know. It, I had to ruin the streak. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, no, no other uh, Q and A or questions have come in. So you know, in the gift of, or in, in the in the spirit of gifting and giving and stuff, let's give everybody some four minutes back to top up their drinks, get to their stuff, follow up on emails, do whatever it is. Thanks everybody for coming out. Fantastic. Thanks for spending a little bit Thank of time you. with us and uh, the recording will hit your mailbox uh, shortly. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Colin. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.